Well, Tyrone's in for a bit of a shock tonight. We're in Coronation Street at half seven. But now on ITV, it's the very latest lunchtime news. Good afternoon. A South Korean school vice principal has apparently taken his own life two days after he was rescued from the sinking ferry where many of his students are thought to have died. 268 passengers are still missing, but hopes are fading of finding any of them alive. Lewis Vaughan Jones has the latest. The ferry is now underwater. In rough seas, inflatable buoys mark the spot where it sank. Despite the numbers involved in this rescue, there are still 268 people missing below. The Coast Guard gave the latest update, saying two divers entered the water and opened the door of the cargo compartment. But they couldn't enter further due to obstacles and didn't find any survivors. Save our children, shouts this father. So many families are angry that not enough is being done. Most of those on board were children from the same school. Here too, they wait for news. They should have rescued the children on the day it happened, this woman says. What are they doing now? Three days have passed. The vice principal of the school, Kang Min Gyu, is believed to have taken his own life yesterday. The captain of the ferry has so far hidden his face, but prosecutors now want to arrest him. It's thought he wasn't at the helm when the ship capsized. There will be questions now about what could have caused this and about the speed of any evacuation. 179 people have been rescued so far. On shore, there is still hope there will be more. Lewis Vaughan Jones, ITV News. It's been confirmed that a British teenager has died in the conflict in Syria. 18-year-old Abdullah Deghaid was from Brighton. It's unclear exactly how he died, but it's believed he may have been visiting family. It's also thought he'd planned to go to university in this country. A rescue operation is underway after an avalanche on Mount Everest. At least 13 Sherpa guides have been killed and more are critically injured. It's thought to be the worst climbing disaster at the mountain. The Labour Party has appointed one of the key architects of Barack Obama's presidential election victories as a strategic advisor to its 2015 campaign. Hi, I'm David Axelrod, and I'm proud to join the Labour team on behalf of Ed Miliband and his campaign for Prime Minister. Well, Mr Axelrod will work alongside the Shadow Foreign Secretary Douglas Alexander, who's in charge of Labour's general election strategy. Well, our political correspondent Romilly Weeks is in Westminster. So, Romilly, will he be an asset to the Labour Party in the coming months? Well, they certainly think so. Worth paying him a six-figure sum and not somebody they're hiding under a bushel either. Even making a video of David Axelrod talking about why he's joined the Labour campaign and comparing Ed Miliband's message to that of President Obama. And it's not hard to see why they are pleased. This is a man who comes with two successful American election campaigns behind him. A man who was so close to uh, President Obama that he was called a lobe of of Obama's brain and at a time when uh, Ed Miliband's uh, personal poll ratings are pretty dismal the fact that someone like David Axelrod is backing him as a winner is something of a coup it also sets up an interesting battle of the foreign the overseas election supremos on the conservative side they've got Linton Crosby the Australian the Lib Dems have signed up a South African Ryan Curtsy Ed Miliband was looking a little lonely without his own not anymore Romilly, for now, thank you very much. Finally, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have been enjoying a sunny Good Friday down under. The royals visited a children's hospice in New South Wales, spending time with parents and their families before heading to the beach and meeting lifeguards. Kate has thanked Australians for their warm welcome. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's welcomed me and George so incredibly warmly on our first visit. To be here as a family has been very special and we'll always remember it with friends and happy members. Well, there'll be more on the Royal Tour later. We're back at around quarter to seven. Until then, do have a very good afternoon. Goodbye. Oh, 
It can get nippy up north. But we soon warm up. Pastor Colin! Seven Seas Joint Care proudly sponsors the ITV National Weather. Hello, good afternoon. What a beautiful start to the long Easter weekend. Plenty of sunshine to enjoy. Just a few exceptions. Thicker cloud across the far northwest and some patchy cloud for the southeast corner, just turning the sunshine a little hazy from time to time. And little change through the course of this evening and overnight. The cloud across the northwest will sink a little further south with some outbreaks of rain here. But elsewhere, it's dry under clear skies and with light winds, a widespread ground frost, perhaps even a touch of air frost from more rural spots and then tomorrow another fine day the cloud across the northwest producing some outbreaks of rain perhaps even the odd shower across the southeast corner but elsewhere some beautiful sunshine once again with highs of 13 to 15 degrees seven seas joint care proudly sponsors the itv national weather hello again now the main stories here in london the Easter weekend is set to provide a boost for the capital's economy, with thousands of shoppers hitting the West End over the bank holiday weekend. Around £140 million is, pre is predicted to be spent in the area. Today is the second busiest shopping day of the year in London after Christmas Eve. I think the draw is in the West End we have over 200 flagship stores um, across the three streets, Oxford Street, Regent Street and Bond Street. I think it's the, the, the experience that, they, that the brands can offer. So typically, Easter weekend is normally about DIY, so certainly for those that love a bit of DIY, any of the department stores would be able to cater for that. Um, but I think where, as I said, with the weather and the, the shift in Easter, certainly about those summer trends. A lorry driver arrested after a five-vehicle pile-up on the M26 in which two women were killed has been released on bail. The 45-year-old was held in connection with the crash on the M26 in Kent near the junction with the M25. Two people, a 22-year-old woman and a 16-year-old girl, both from France, died in the accident, which blocked both carriageways. Seven other people were injured. 44% of Londoners believe Britain will become a nation of renters within the next generation. A report by a building society shows that Londoners see home ownership as more difficult to achieve than ever before. Half of those living in the capital say that Britain is becoming more like Europe, where renting is the norm. More than three quarters also said they weren't prepared to downgrade their rented accommodation in order to save up for a deposit to buy. A cast of over 100 plus from horses, donkeys and doves are performing in Trafalgar Square today. The Winters Hall players have staged The Passion of Jesus on Good Friday every year since 2010. Starring actor James Burke Dunsmore as Jesus, the rest of the company is made up of volunteers from in and around London and the South East. The play attracts an audience of up to 200,000 people every year. Queues are clearing at St Pancras International today after last night's delays. As the bank holiday getaway was in full swing, many trains between London, Paris and Brussels were delayed or cancelled after technical problems and a fatality near Lille in France. Eurotunnel has warned it won't be selling tickets today to people who don't have a reservation. Well, let's take a look at that all-important bank holiday weather forecast now. Here's Amanda Houston with the details. We love to get away, whatever the weather. My Ferrylink Dover to Calais Ferries. Sponsor ITV London Weekday Weather. Hello and a very good afternoon to you. So the weather will be going downhill for the second part of the Easter weekend, but it gets off to a cracking start. Now for this afternoon, it will be dry. We've got some lovely sunshine and light winds too. Well, not quite as warm as yesterday, but still it will feel pleasant. We're looking at a top temperature of around 14 degrees. And it stays quiet throughout tonight. It's dry with clear skies, and that's going to allow temperatures to fall close to freezing. So there will be a widespread grass frost and pockets of air frost too, meaning it will be a chilly start to the day tomorrow. Now there will be a bit more cloud across us and the chance of one or two showers the further east that you are but for many of us it will be a dry day bright or sunny intervals and we're looking at a top temperature this time of 15 degrees or 59 in fahrenheit see you later bye bye my ferry link dover to calais ferries sponsor itv london weekday weather And that's it from us for now. Don't forget you can get updates by going to our website, itv.com London. We're back at 6.30. Bye-bye. <laughs>